This video will take you through the basic operation of the digital oscilloscope. We will start by examining the display screen and then we will show what the main controls do. The screen on the left is the main display and has axes like a graph. It is divided into a grid with each square called a division. The vertical axis measures voltage and the screen at the moment is showing a voltage that is varying up and down in a sinusoidal manner. At the bottom of the screen is the voltage scale, which shows one volt per division. The varying voltage shown, from its lowest point to the highest point, is four divisions, so the voltage is varying by four times one volt, or four volts peak to peak. The horizontal axis shows time. The main use of the oscilloscope is to show voltage as a function of time. The time scale, or time base as it's called, is shown next to the M at the bottom of the screen. In this case, it is 20 milliseconds per division. From one voltage peak to the next is five divisions here, giving a period of this signal to be five times 20 milliseconds, which is 100 milliseconds for a period. This is a frequency of 10 hertz. The oscilloscope is constantly updating the displayed signal, but our eyes cannot follow such rapid updates. If we look at a lower frequency signal with a slower time base, we can see drawn out on the screen the time varying nature of the voltage. Now let's look at the controls on the right hand side of the oscilloscope. The main controls are arranged in three groups, labelled at the top, vertical, horizontal and trigger. Starting with the vertical controls, the position knob moves the signal up or down on the screen. The location of the zero voltage is always indicated on the screen by the arrow on the left. The other main vertical control is the scale, which can increase or decrease the volts per division on the display. If I increase the volts per division, then the signal is displayed smaller. For example, now the scale is 5 volts per division. And if I move the vertical position, you can see that the signal variation is about four-fifths of a vertical division. So four-fifths of five volts, which is four volts. The signal into the oscilloscope has not changed, simply the scale of the display. If I decrease the volts per division, I've increased the sensitivity of the oscilloscope, and the signal will now cover more of the screen vertically. For example, I have 500 millivolts per division, that is half a volt per division, then the signal now covers eight divisions vertically. That is, it is still showing a four volt peak to peak signal. Moving on to the horizontal controls. The first one is again position, but this time it moves the displayed signal to the left or right on the screen. You will notice that there is a small arrow at the top of the screen that moves as the horizontal position is changed. We'll talk more about what this indicates when we get to the trigger section. Similar to the vertical section, there is also a scale control for the horizontal axis. This is called the time base. The time per division can be increased, fitting more oscillations onto the screen. Here, with 100 milliseconds per division, there is only one division between the peaks. Decreasing the time per division acts to zoom in horizontally. With a time base of 10 milliseconds per division, there are 10 horizontal divisions between peaks for this 10 hertz signal. Once again, there is no change to the signal into the oscilloscope. It remains a 10 hertz frequency in this case. Only the display is being varied. As well as the adjustment knobs, there are also buttons that typically bring up menus on the screen. So let's look at some of them now. This oscilloscope can have two separate signals connected to it, which we call channels 1 and 2. So far, we have been looking at the signal on channel 1, which is coloured blue on the screen and has the number 1 in its zero voltage marker on the screen. By pressing the channel 1 button, we bring up a menu with options for channel 1 settings. To access a menu item, we press the corresponding function button next to the screen. For example, to change the coupling of channel 1, press the F1 function button. In this case, 
a submenu of options appears. Continuing to press the F1 button scrolls through this submenu, and waiting a few seconds allows the selected option to become active. In this case, the coupling has been changed to AC. Another way to use the submenus is with the multi-purpose knob at the top of the control section. Once the submenu is visible, turning the multi-purpose knob scrolls through the options. Rather than wait a few seconds, the desired selection can be chosen by pressing the multi-purpose knob. In this case, coupling has been changed back to DC. Some menu options have only two possible choices, and pushing the function button toggles between them. For example, the invert function for channel 1 can either be on or off, so pushing the F5 function button switches between these two settings. After settings have been adjusted, it is useful to close the menu, since it blocks part of the screen from showing the signal. The way to close the menu is to simply press the multi-purpose button. If there is no menu showing, then pressing the multi-purpose button opens the most recently used menu, as indicated at the top right of the screen. In this case, it is the Channel 1 menu. Pressing the multi-purpose knob again closes the menu. If we press the Channel 2 button, the display also shows the signal connected to channel 2, and brings up the menu for that channel. Let's push the multi-purpose knob to close the menu, and see that the display now has two signals, with channel 2 coloured yellow, and its zero voltage reference indicated with the number 2. Notice that the channel 2 marker is coloured in, which indicates that the vertical controls will now affect channel 2. The channel 1 marker is not coloured in, so if we adjust the vertical position control, the channel 2 display moves up or down, but channel 1 is unaffected. The same is true for adjusting the vertical scale. Only the volts per division setting for channel 2 will be affected. If we want to make adjustments again to channel 1, we simply push the channel 1 button to make it the active channel. To turn a channel off, make it the active channel so that its reference number is coloured, so here we might push the channel 2 button, and then press its channel button again to turn it off. Now we only have channel 1 displayed again. The next set of controls are for the trigger settings, and triggering probably causes the most difficulty for people learning how to use an oscilloscope. The details of triggering are given in the laboratory learning module that you should read, but basically the trigger settings tell the oscilloscope when to update the display. Let's look at what happens if the trigger settings are not quite right. The display is essentially updating at random times, so each image does not align with the previous one. It looks like the signal is moving all over the screen, rather than sitting essentially still. This usually means that the trigger level, which is the voltage level that the oscilloscope uses as the starting point of its display, is either too high or too low. The trigger level control changes this voltage setting, and as the knob is turned, a dotted horizontal line shows the trigger voltage value. Once the trigger level matches some part of the signal, the display becomes stable. The trigger level is indicated by the small arrow on the right side of the screen. The trigger point for updating the display also has a location along the horizontal time axis. This is indicated by the small arrow at the top of the screen. When the horizontal position is adjusted, it is this trigger location that moves left or right. Pushing the trigger menu button brings up some options that relate to the trigger, and works in much the same way as the channel menu. A button that can be very useful if you're having trouble getting the triggering to work properly is the force trigger. In some cases, an untriggered oscilloscope shows no signal at all, so it is hard to know whether you should increase or decrease the trigger level, or by how much. Pushing the force button in the trigger control forces the oscilloscope to display the signal once, allowing you to see where the trigger should be set. In this case, the trigger level was too low, so if we adjust it upward, we can once again have a stable triggered display. There are several extra buttons at the top of the control section that access more advanced functions, but they'll be left for you to explore in the laboratory. The final one that I will mention is the button at the top right, the Run Stop button. This button will normally be green, indicating that the oscilloscope is constantly updating its display, according to the trigger settings. 
You can press this button to stop the display from updating, and the button turns red. This is the stop condition. Push it again to restart the signal update. Sometimes the settings from other menus can cause this button to turn red, and if that happens, you should push it again, make it turn green to keep updating the display. There are many other features of the oscilloscope that make it such a powerful piece of test equipment, more than we can show in this video. But if you can understand the main adjustments of the vertical, horizontal and trigger controls, you'll be ready to explore the instrument in the lab.